Summer Templates Bonus Lesson 1 Introduction to Template Scrapbooking In this lesson, I will introduce you to template scrapbooking and walk you through the process of fully editing your first digital template. I am using the Day 1 template. You may want to use this template to follow my instructions step by step. Our first step is to open the template and set up our workspace. Open Adobe Photoshop Elements and then go to File, Open, and select and locate the layer template on your hard drive. Make sure to use the file with extension .psd and not the .jpg file. Next, we'll need to duplicate the template and resave it as a new file. This is a crucial step because it allows us to reuse the unmodified template in the future. So go to File, Duplicate, and rename your file. Then click OK, select the original template, and close it. Then inside of the project bin, click on the new template, and you're ready to get started. Let's take a closer look at the layers that make up the template in the Layers panel. The layers consist first of a background layer, which we'll completely discard when we add our new digital paper in. Next up is shape layers for our paper. These are the shapes that we'll clip our papers directly to. Then we have shape layers for photos, which also have layer effects. We're going to clip our photos to these layers, and we can click on the FX to bring up the Style Settings menu. And here we can change the drop shadow, which was the effect that I added to all of the photo layers. Then we have our accent layers. There's a brush accent right above the background, a photo frame, tag element, flower, screw mat, and a screw. I recommend that you replace these template accents with digital elements that work with your template. Next up is text layers, including the journaling text and the title text. And finally, we have the photo numbers, and you can completely discard this layer. This helps you keep track of the corresponding photo number and the photo layer. All of the templates that you will work with in Summer Templates will feature some, if not all, of the above layer types. We can also make universal or layer-specific changes to our template. We can rotate or flip the entire design of the template, and this is called a universal change. To make universal changes to the template, use the Image menu. To rotate, go to Image, Rotate, and select 90 degrees left, 90 degrees right, or 180 degrees. To flip the entire template, simply go to Flip Horizontal or Flip Vertical. We can also rotate or flip individual layers within a template. This is called a layer-specific change. To make layer-specific changes to the template, use the Image menu. Select the appropriate layers in the Layer panel, and then go to Image, Rotate, Layer 90 degree left, 90 degree right, or 180 degrees. And to flip, it's right under that. Flip Layer Horizontal or Flip Layer Vertical. If you aren't pleased with the result of rotating or flipping the template or a layer, press Ctrl-Z on a PC or Command-Z on the Mac to undo any changes. Or go to Window, Undo History to open the Undo History panel. Now it's time to have a little bit of fun. Our next step is to open, resize, and clip our photos to the photo shape layers in the template. You can go to File and Open to choose and open your photos. From there, Activate the Move tool. Click on the photo thumbnail in the project bin. 
and use the Move tool to click and drag your photo right into the template. Now in the Layers panel here, we'll need to drag our photo over the photo shape that we want to clip our photo to so that it can assume the size and shape of that layer. So in the Layers panel, I'm going to click on my photo and drag it above the Photo 1 layer area. That way it will completely cover the Photo 1 area. Before I clip my photo to the shape, I want to adjust the size of the photo. In Photoshop Elements, when you have the Move tool selected, you will see the Show Bounding box in the Context Sensitive menu. When it's checked, I can simply click on my photo layer and I will see a bounding box surround the size of my photo. Then I can hover my mouse over the cursor arrows to decrease or increase the size of my photo. Also keep in mind that you don't need to pre-crop your photos to fit these sizes. The clipping group will get rid of the background areas. So simply decrease the size of your photo until you're happy with the arrangement and then select the green checkbox to complete any changes. Next we'll need to create a clipping group from the photo shape to the photo. Make sure you still have your photo targeted in the Layers panel and then go to Layer, Create Clipping Mask and the photo will clip to the layer marked Photo 1. Now there are some easier ways to create a clipping group in Photoshop Elements. The easiest way is to simply select the Command G on the Mac or Control G on the PC shortcut keys. This shortcut key command will create a simple clipping group from your targeted layer to the layer right underneath. You can repeat these steps for each photo in your template. After we've gathered our photos and clipped them to the appropriate layers, we can do the same process to our papers for any shapes. Go to File, Open, and choose the paper of your choice. Then activate the Move tool and drag the paper into the template. In the Layers panel, drag the Papers layer above either the Paper Strip or the Scalloped Shape layer. Then create your clipping mass. Simply select Command G on the Mac or Control G on the PC for those shortcut keys and the paper will clip to the layer and mirror any features of that shape. We can also replace our background layer. Choose the background paper and drag it into the template just like we did our photos. Make sure it sits right above the layer marked background in the layers panel. Then right click the background layer and select delete. All that's left in our template is to add our title and journaling and select our elements. For the title and journaling, you can click on the horizontal text tool and replace my text with your title and journaling. You can also change the font, size, and properties of the text using the context sensitive options bar at the top of the editor. Now an alternative step is to delete my text layers and use word art, digital brushes, alphas or journaling strips and you can do that as you become more familiar with templates. Use the move tool to click and drag alternative text elements in. Now we'll discuss title crafting, journaling text, size, and leading in detail on days 6 and 10. And finally, add digital kit embellishments to the template like you would any element for digital scrapbooking. I recommend replacing the template elements with real digital scrapbook items. Use the Move tool to click and drag each new element into the template. I look forward to sharing my favorite element tips on day 9 and throughout the class. So in this bonus lesson, I have showed you how to modify a layered template.
The same basic principles discussed herein can be applied to any template you receive during this summer edition of 25 Days of Templates. If you have any questions about the layered templates, feel free to email me personally at tiffany at reneepearson.com or join me in our class forums. In our next lesson, we'll begin a discussion on style.